Good morning. Hi, I'm Suzanne and welcome to our Tuesday Live here at Rogers Gardens. I'm a horticulturist here and this morning we're going to be talking about our monarch wishing tree, which we have started, um, I think about a week and a half ago, uh, maybe two weeks ago. This is um, a project that we're doing with the Xerces Society and um, if you don't know about the Xerces Society, it is America's largest science-based nonprofit um, organization that is uh, dedicated to invertebrate conservation. So um, things like bumblebees and butterflies and things like that, the Xerces Society is helping to uh, bring back ones that are on the brink of extinction, for example, like the monarchs and other, other bumblebees and things like that. They have a great, great website filled with lots of information, so uh, you should go and check them out. But in the meantime, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about our tree here. Um, we have these really cute little butterflies that we have here. They're wooden, they say Rogers Gardens on them. And um, they, uh, for a $5 donation, you can get one of these cards. You're gonna fill out, um, on the back, you can write a wish with one of our Sharpies and then you're gonna hang it on the tree like all these other ones are. There's some really, really beautiful ones here if you want. You can also take it home, decorate it up and bring it back like some people have. I just noticed one right here. Wow, that one is for real. It is quite the uh, monarch. And you know, some people use um, nail polish and stuff like that to decorate them. So you can really have a lot of fun with it. Put your wish on the back and we'll attach it up there. We're gonna leave this tree up here for the entire summer and all 100% of the donations are going to the Xerces Society to help them forward their efforts with monarch conservation. Um, a couple of things that I would like to show you today. So with the wishing tree, hopefully it's just gonna be completely filling this entire tree and, and looking like the monarchs that are overwintering uh, here on the West Coast. Um, two things about monarchs, one, there are Western monarchs to their Eastern monarchs. All the monarchs that you see here in Southern California are Western monarchs. They start their year here along the coast, anywhere from like the Bay Area down to San Diego. They um, overwinter in trees along the coast here. And then when they wake up in the spring, like around February, March, they're gonna fan out and they'll go from the coast here all the way to the Rockies and up to Canada and then at the end of the season, which would be the end of September or so, they're gonna come right back here. So um, there are Eastern Monarchs. They of course handle everything east of the Rockies and they are the ones that will go down, uh, they will migrate down to Mexico. So if you've heard about the Monarchs in Mexico, that, that is Eastern ones. We have our Western ones here and the Western ones are um, just as imperiled as the Eastern, but we're going to try and work on our um, Western monarchs by planting milkweed. And this is native milkweed. This is the narrow leaf milkweed. It's called uh, Asclepius fascicularis. This is a very kind of a slow growing little weedy plant. You can just stick it in your garden in a couple of places and it will slowly spread with rhizomes through the garden and also through seeds if you get them. If a monarch should happen to discover this, they will lay their eggs on this plant. The eggs will hatch, the caterpillars will come out, and they will just eat voraciously for um, almost two weeks. And then they will climb off of the plant. 20, 30 feet away, they will find a place to form a cocoon. And then up to um, maybe almost two weeks later, they will become a butterfly. Um, one of the really, really important things that we like to impress upon people is that although in the past we have sold tropical milkweed, we've learned from the scientists that that is a bad choice. Only native milkweed, because it goes dormant in the winter, it will not uh, harbor this really bad parasite that has um, helped really destroy the monarch population. It's called OE. It's a really long word and I can never remember it, so we're just gonna call it OE today. But OE will um, stay on that tropical milkweed. It will overwinter with it. Even if you cut it back, 
it's going to stay on that milkweed. And what happens is, if this were tropical milkweed, the parasite is on there, the butterflies will land on it, the parasites will jump onto the butterfly and it will spread them. So if you have tropical milkweed, please pull it out, put one in a bag, bring it here to Rogers Gardens and we will give you one free uh, native milkweed in exchange for it. Um, take all of your tropical milkweed out. It is um, really hard to get butterflies to do the right thing and only land on the native if they have a choice between the two. It's almost like telling kids, would you like McDonald's for dinner or would you like this beautiful plate of health food? Um, they're both good, but one is going to be the superior choice and butterflies need to have only the health food choice. So let's see, what else? Oh, yes. So in in the butterfly life cycle, we've talked about this a little bit, but so they start in January. We'll just start with January as our calendar year. They're hibernating, they're overwintering. Sometimes they might leave the big trees that they're in for a little food. That's where you need butterfly food plants. You don't need the milkweed then. It's really important to know you only really need good milkweed March through September. So if you see a butterfly in your garden in, um, in December, you want to have a plant like a scabiosa or a yarrow plant, achillea. You can have these beautiful erigeron. And if you notice these plants, they all have kind of a similar look that they look like a little landing pad. Butterflies love this because they can just land here and get a lot of energy from one, you know, group of flowers or one big chunk of nectar here. If you have something like Pentas, again, it's that landing pad where they can get a ton of nectar from all these different flowers grouped together. And then we have the beautiful Scabiosa. There's a ton of different kinds of scabios. I brought this one because I thought it was so pretty. And even in your shade plants, there is heliotrope. So this can take morning sun. The butterflies would love this. And then as the season goes on, we have some status. It's not really blooming yet, but it will. It's blue. We have the pink. There's also the monkey flowers, which are the native. These little purple erigeron over here, I don't know if you can still see them, but they are a native as well. So sticking with native plants is always gonna be the best for all of your pollinators like monarchs and bees and hummingbirds and things like that. Um, one other thing is this. So if you really wanna help monarchs, again, milkweed is a great start, but they also need those food sources throughout the entire year, food sources and water. The milkweed is just March through September, but this, it's a little saucer, it's got some water and it's got some pebbles. So the butterflies can land on the pebbles and still get water, but also honeybees can. It's a great way for bees to get a little water and you don't have to worry about them drowning. Drowning. And this is also just a cute one. You can do it with a pie plate or a yogurt lid or whatever you want. Just have a little bit of water there. You might want to fill it up every day, or if you have sprinklers, it might fill them up for you, but it is a great way to have the uh, monarchs have a little water along with their food here. So um, let's see if I haven't told you enough about tropical. Tropical milkweed is the ones with yellow or red or a combination, red and orange, red and yellow, yellow, yellow. Those are the tropical milkweeds. They have a tendency to get tons and tons of seeds and they'll spread throughout your entire garden. So if you can, yank those out in favor of the native milkweed that has the white and the pink flower. So um, are there any questions? Yes, uh, my native milkweed never gets flowers. Any suggestions? Well, there might be a couple reasons. It might be that the caterpillars are eating it. Um, usually, like I have some at home I have about five or seven plants at home and it's funny, the monarch came, laid its eggs and they just completely destroyed one plant. Another plant has completely been ignored and it's flowering right now. So if you have caterpillars on the plant, they probably won't flower because 
the caterpillars are going to eat it. So it, that's probably it. But it will spread, luckily, through those little rhizomes, so it's kind of neat that you'll see it popping up throughout the garden. And um, there was something else. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I was just... It, oh, the sign. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. So um, here at Rogers, we have this whole tree. We have a whole hill of um, milkweed. We have lots of information. Oh, I remember what I was just going to say. Hold on. Before I forget it again, is that we also have these really cool monarch kits. And you can get these online or in the store. This is one milkweed plant and five little four inch plants that you can plant in your garden so that you have a host plant and food for your butterflies. It comes with the wishing uh, tree butterfly as well. So it's really nice. You can get this or take it home and this is a very easy way to attract butterflies and other pollinators to your garden. So this, uh, we also have this great sign here and it's on our website as well at the Monarch page there, but it does talk about how this is November through March is when you just need food and water and October through, um, sorry, April through October, you need the milkweed, the food and the water. So it's just really easy. I know a lot of people will come in and they'll say, oh, I have a monarch in my garden. I need milkweed, but um, they only reproduce March through September. And then those uh, monarchs will just you usually get about three or four generations of it. The monarchs that are born in September will live probably up to six months. They're the, the super monarchs, the ones that will travel the furthest and live the longest. And then when they get ready to have babies, that's it for them. So some monarchs only live three weeks, some live six months, uh, just depending on when it is. Any other questions? Can you start native milkweeds from seed? You can. It's a little bit difficult, but yes, you can. Okay, so that's about it. If you have any other questions about monarchs or milkweed or pollinator plants, any sort of food, please uh, find us at Instagram, Facebook. We're also YouTube. You can subscribe and uh, see us. We have rogersgardens.com. You can also send messages that way. You can call us. You can shop in store. You can shop in line. You can do, you can do it all. <laughs> So anyway, that's it for me today. Um, Thursday, Sarah will be here with our plant of the week. Um, I already know what it is and it's gonna be a good one. And then on Friday, Natalie's gonna be here with um, some garden rooms information for you about plants, uh, indoor plants. So I'm gonna be watching that one because I need to learn a lot about indoor plants. And until next time, I'll see you soon.